everyone, it's Andrea from AndreaTilly.com. I have a new crazy puppy who's so big, he's not really my puppy anymore. This is Finnegan, and he's a wild child, aren't you? So I just wanted you all to meet Finn. We're having a blast. No biting, no biting. So I'm going to put him down, and we're going to get started with a video today, okay? So after that crazy introduction to my dog Finnegan, I'm going to answer some email questions. I've been getting some great questions from you guys. And so today I have three different emails that people have sent me and I'm going to try to answer them for you right now. All right, so the first one is from Autumn. Autumn is a pre-med freshman, doing well in her classes, has all A's, but she's nervous about biology. She says, I love bio and I understand it, but the questions on the exams can sometimes trip me up. She's done well in the exams, some between like 80s and 90s on her exam grades, and so she's worried about her final coming up in two weeks. She says, I don't want an A- minus in the class, I want an A. With that being said, do you have any recommendations for preparing yourself for questions that might be trickier? How do you break them down or anything like that? And then she says, also I know getting good grades is important for medical school, but is it okay to get an A- minus every once in a while? So these are awesome questions, Autumn, and so... We're going to try to break it down. So first thing is that whenever I was right on the edge between like an A or an A minus in a class and it was all coming down to the final exam, which I feel like happens all the time, I would always meet with the professor and I would tell the professor, you know, I love your class. I've been working really hard. I feel like I've done really well and I understand the material, but I'm kind of right on that edge. And so what recommendations would you have for me to study for the final? And you'd be surprised how many times they'll say, oh, you should really pay attention to this review sheet or review all the homework questions or give you some really great tips that will kind of lead you in the right direction um, for the final because there's so much material and you never know like what's the best thing to study. And you can even ask the professor, like, should I focus on the textbook or should I focus on the notes from class or anything like that. So I think that's always really good because they're going to appreciate that you've taken the time to meet with them and ask them about the final. And they're going to remember that too when they're grading you um, for your final grade in the course. They're going to remember that you've met with them, that you've asked questions and things like that. So definitely meet with your professor and ask them for tips about the final. Okay? So that's number one. And then the next thing I would do is review all of the old exams if they give you the old tests. I feel like most people, um, most professors will give you a copy of the old test. So try to review all the questions, go through the take the test again, make sure you understand all of them because sometimes on the final exam you'll find that there's similar questions kind of phrased a little differently or look through the answer choices and make sure you understand all the answer choices because you'll find even sometimes word for word questions, same exact questions from the test. Okay, then the next thing you can do is try to ask people who've taken the class before any advice they have for studying for the final or ask the professor if there's any old final exams that you can use to study from um, or ask your friends if they have any old final exams as long as that's within the um, correct standards for your class. You know, if some classes are very private about exams and professors don't want you to take home exams and so it would be considered cheating or kind of blurring the lines to ask for an old test or to look at an old test of a friend's, but if that's you think that's okay in your class, then definitely do that because you can pick up a lot of good extra questions um, and kind of tips for what's gonna be on the test. So then the other thing I would say is that it is totally acceptable to get an A- minus every once in a while. I got an A- minus in many classes. I think I got an A- minus in chemistry one semester. I think I got an A- minus in, um, in biology one semester. I got a B plus in the biology lab. Um, and so don't stress about it. I think that if the majority of your grades are A's, biology, chemistry, those uh, core classes that you take as a freshman in college, they're really challenging. Those are weed out classes. And so if you're getting an A minus, you're doing awesome. So don't stress about that. Um, and also this is just the first semester, so you have next semester as well to kind of step it up. If you get a B plus or something, try to get an A next semester. But, um, you know, take that pressure off yourself because that's going to help you study better. If you're so focused on like, I must get an A and you are so stressed about having to get an A, sometimes that can make you even do worse on the test because you're so anxious and there's so much in your mind, you know, there's so much riding on the test. 
So give yourself a break. If you get an A minus, it's no problem. You're still going to do awesome, okay? So that's my advice for you. And then the last thing is um, if there's tricky questions or things on the exam, I think looking through old questions is the best thing that can help me um, because it gives you an idea of how they're going to test the different topics. So do all the questions in your textbook, um, read through all of your notes, and ask yourself, how would I trip myself up on this? Or how would I make this kind of a tricky question? And put yourself in the test maker's position and see, I remember I would think like, I bet they're going to ask me this. And what they really want is me to do this. And so if you ever have those moments, make sure that you kind of commit them to memory. Like, oh yeah, they're going to do this. Or sometimes they even say it in class. Like this can be kind of tricky or they'll give you some kind of hint in class. Put a big star in your notes next to that. I have in next to my notes in college or in medical school, I would write like exam and put a line if, if they kind of hinted like this will come up later or, you know, whatever. So really pay attention to that kind of stuff. That uh, might not help you now studying for the final, but kind of going forward. I think that's a helpful tip. Okay, so I hope that helps you. You're going to do awesome. Good luck on your finals. Okay, our next question comes from AB. Uh, or A, I, I don't know, they just signed it A. And they ask, hi Andrea, three questions. Number one, how do I summarize 20 pages of lecture notes on one sheet of paper when all the information is new? Question number two, in your residency, because of material overload, did you skip the summary sheets and only do the question making folded sheets? And number three, review, when do you do review and how? These are such good questions. So. For, for your first question, how do I summarize 20 pages of lecture notes on one sheet? You can't. There, I mean, unless it's 20 pages of like nothing um, or very not important information that you already know, there's no way you're going to be able to consolidate. So I know I try to say make these like one page sheets, but that's just a guideline. Sometimes your one page sheet is really like th a three page sheet. But the point is that you want to condense all of your lectures um, into a little bite-sized piece of information. So maybe you have like two pages from this one lecture now, or three pages from instead of 20. So condensing it as much as possible, I think is the key. And don't stress about whether or not it can fit on exactly one page. And then make sure that you're um, just not rewriting the information, but synthesize it and organize it in a different way. So make bullet points, make outlines. If there's a bunch of factoids, be like, everything about this and just kind of list them or list them all in one line with commas so it takes up less space on your sheets. The point is that you're trying to get through this information and work through it and reorganize it in your head and that's what's going to help you remember it and that's what's going to help it be easier to study and so don't stress about how many pages your your note sheets are or anything like that. Just try to kind of put it into a format that you can refer to and understand it without having to flip through 20 pages of lecture notes anymore. That's, that's kind of what I would do. I don't, I hope that's helpful. Okay. And then the next thing is, um, in residency, did you skip the summary sheets and only do question folded sheets? So in resident residency is such a different beast than medical school because there's not tests. There are some lectures, but it's so it's different. And it's a lot of it is clinical information that you're kind of learning as you're going. And so in order to learn, I really make an effort to try to kind of look everything up on patients that I have and read about my patients because that helps you remember things. Um, and then I use silly mnemonics and um, random memory tools to try to remember more more obscure things like the corneal dystrophies or what chromosome everything is. You know, we have to know that you still, even in residency, you have to know what chromosome different disorders are on or what the gene mutation is or if it's TGF beta or whatever. So for those, I would for those kind of like minutia, I would use the folded sheets because that's more just like facts. And that's kind of the same as using like a flashcard. But for conceptual things, sometimes I'll make a review sheet and write everything down. And other times I just read and kind of reread. So residency is totally different. Um, I'm going to show you my notebook that I'm currently using. And I have many of these, but this is my current notebook that I'm using right now to take notes. So hold on one second. Okay. So right now I'm using this composition book. Um, it's just a small composition book that I can throw in my bag. And I have a bunch of these that I've used. And I have some papers that I just stuck in here that I need to read. And so we're going to flip through um, some of the just kind of like review study sheets that I've made. 
a lot of it's just notes that I've taken from lectures in class. So, so for example, I'm on PEDS right now, pediatric ophthalmology. And so I have all these great lectures with one of my attendings. And so I just take notes when he talks to me. And so this whole page is on congenital esotropia. And I'm just writing down what he's saying to me. And so this is essentially the same as what would happen in medical school in a lecture. And so, um, you know, I put like little stars by things and I just, I take notes kind of the same way I think that you all would take notes and just write down what you think is important. I try to group things together. And this isn't the most um, organized form of notes, but um, it, it's useful for me. Here's another example. So I wrote red flags and I have all the bad things that you need to watch out for that would mean there's something else bad going on kind of written down and, and that's important and so it's underlined. And I can always go back to this and resynthesize it. And what I often do is when I'm reading in the textbook, I'll kind of have my little notebook next to me and I'll refer back to my notebook and either write additional things in my textbook or write additional things in my notebook and kind of add things to both of them. But then if I'm taking stuff from the book, so this would be an example of notes that I've taken from the book and this would be like a one page summary sheet. So this is all the toxic retinopathies. And so I have different points that I've kind of written down of all the different um, medications that cause a toxic retinopathy. And so this is just one page and this is probably like three pages or maybe even more in my textbook. But you know, so for example here, um, for Melaril, I have written down that it concentrates in uveal tissue and then I just wrote to leads to RPE damage. So I don't need to know anything else besides the fact that it leads to RPE damage. And so I make my little, you know, leads to sign and that's enough for me. Um, and you don't really need a ton more. It's just the big points and the things you want to remember. And so that's how I do it in residency. I think I was a little more intense in medical school and I would write down much, much more. Here's another example of, um, these are all the different studies. There's tons of studies in ophthalmology that we have to know. And so all the different studies, I have the key points from the studies and then I've highlighted the names of all the studies so that I can easily go back and refer to, oh yeah, what did that study show again? What was the main point of that study? And some of these I just have like a tiny little blurb because I don't care about all the minutia, but I just wanna know the big points of the study. And so here's some more studies. And this, so this is going to be more than one page, all these different studies, but it's something that I can go back and refer to later. My Finnegan is playing with my backpack. So that's kind of how I make it in residency. And in residency, it's just totally different, and you kind of have to find the way of studying that works for you. Okay, and then the last question is review. When do you review and how? Oh my gosh. I review whenever I get a chance, which is not as often as it should be because that's the way residency works. And how do I review? I either reread stuff in my book, and uh, we have these books in residency. These are like our main textbooks. And so um, you will see that I highlight stuff as I go through it. And so I'll go back and reread the stuff that I've highlighted. and. Um, also, I'll, I write little notes in my textbook, so some people are very anti that, but like I'll write little things. So I'll go back and reread what I've written, or like I said, I'll look at my notes and refer back to the book. But honestly, man, studying in residency is hard, and you just have to find time when you have time between seeing patients, being on call, trying to do research, trying to be involved in leadership. There's just so many things going on. And so you read about your patients, and you study in clinic, and then you review whenever you get a chance. And... Um, and that's just how it goes. So those are, those are the big things that I do. I hope that helped. You're going to do great. One more question. This is from Mimi. And Mimi says, Hi, Dr. Tooley. I wanted to ask a quick question. Lately, I've been going through some really tough personal stuff. And it's so hard studying when all I, all I need is some free time to feel sad and deal with my feelings. What is the solution to this? How can I not let my grades fall down in this period of time? Um, so I'm so sorry, Mimi. I'm really sorry that you're going through a hard time. It is so hard to concentrate and to study and to stay focused when you have something else going on that's taking your attention and it's also making you feel sad because you're not going to have the energy to study and 
So it's really tough. I feel for you, and I'm so sorry you're going through this. Um, I hope everything gets better. I can totally relate. During my first year of medical school, Kyle, my husband, and I got into a huge fight. We never fight. It's like the last fight we got into, but it was a gigantic fight, and I was really upset. And it was uh, the day before my anatomy test, and so I was like losing my mind. And I just, it was so hard to study, and it was so hard to concentrate. And I think everybody goes through tough times, and um, it's not uncommon for your schoolwork to suffer. So cut yourself a break if you don't do as great as you first intended to. And everybody understands that things happen in life. And take care of yourself first. That's the most important thing, is to take care of yourself first. Get a lot of rest, sleep, feed yourself well. Make sure you pay attention to your emotions if you need help. Get help. Reach out to friends and family. Make sure people know um, that you might need them in this time. So that's the number one thing you need to do. But in terms of being able to kind of study and push through it, I think you need to be really regimented with yourself. At, at least that's what would work for me. And so if I was very upset and I couldn't focus, I would say, okay, for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to focus as hard as I can, and then I'm going to take a break to, to be sad and just relax. And take it easy on yourself. You know, when you're hardcore studying, 30 minutes might be like nothing, and you might think, no, I need to study for like three hours before I take a break. But your mind is so preoccupied with what's going on. So I would say just say 30 minutes or maybe even like 20 minutes. A very small chunk of time for the next 15 minutes I'm not gonna I'm just gonna laser focus and I think when it's a tiny chunk of time you can get over all the other things that are going on in your mind because your mind doesn't have enough time to wander because you know it's just a short amount of time that you need to be laser focused and set an alarm on your clock and be laser focused for 15 minutes and then get up and get a drink of water and kind of recollect yourself and if you're feeling okay do it again and do it again and you just need to give yourself a ton of time to heal and um, don't be hard on yourself. It's, it's really tough to go through something personal. And I think people are very understanding. So you can always reach out to professors and say, like, look, I've had some huge family issue and I'm not going to do my best on this test or whatever. And they'll work with you. If you're in medical school, there's all kinds of wellness counselors and people who are there for you to kind of help you because medical school in and of itself is such a stressor and so if you have something outside of that that's stressing you more then people just can't you can't handle that amount of stress so take care of yourself and be easy on yourself give yourself a ton of room to kind of get through it and uh, I think if you do want to try to study breaking it up into those small little chunks would be the best way that I think that at least I would be able to get something done. Um, and the other thing is that if you just are not in the in the mindset to learn, if you're just sometimes when I'm so tired, I'm like, I'm not going to absorb any information now. Um, or when you're really upset and you're like, there's no way I, I'm going to remember anything that I read tonight, then do some busy work. That's a really good time to make those folded sheets. And maybe you're not going to remember anything, but at least you have them made. And it's kind of mindless, you know, so make flashcards or make those folded sheets um, or whatever so that you've kind of done the busy work so that you can go back and study later when you're in a better place. So those are the things I would do. Take care of yourself, Mimi. I hope everybody enjoyed these questions. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you never miss a video. I have several other kind of like how to study videos and some motivation videos. So definitely check out those and have a great day.